Hey guys, so today's video is part 3 of Dodge Concept Cars. I asked you guys which video you wanted between this and Chrysler Concept Cars, and the vote was in favor of this one, but I will be doing the other video sometime soon as well, so stay tuned for that one. As for the Dodge Concept Cars, these were designed, built, and even showed off at auto shows, but never made it to the public for purchase. Today we will check out 5 awesome Dodge Concepts that never made it onto the roads, and look into their design, unique features, and specifications. Make sure to check out part 1 and 2 of this series, where I've covered 8 other Dodge Concepts so far. Links to those videos are going to be in the description. So first up is the Dodge Rampage. This concept shares the same name as the Dodge Rampage production car, which was out from 1982 to 1984, but this was totally built from scratch and not actually based on other platforms. This was a bold and versatile truck, first revealed at the 2006 Chicago Auto Show. Dodge says that the Rampage was designed as a truck for people who aren't into trucks. It is the same width as the Ram, and the same length as the Durango. Looking at the exterior, there's the signature Dodge crossbar grille and rectangular wraparound headlights. Those headlights also have LED lighting, and both clear and frosted acrylic. The body has flared U-shaped fenders and door handles, which are both highlighted with brushed aluminum. The roof quickly sweeps down, and there's a small triangular window, which almost gives the truck the appearance of a coupe. 22 by 9 inch wheels came standard, and the cargo box is 5 feet. The front doors open the opposite way that we're used to, while the rear door slides open, making it very easy for passengers to get in and out of the spacious cabin. The center cluster is on a swivel, and can be pulled closer to either the driver or passengers if they want to access the entertainment. The flooring is made of marine type rubber material because the interior is meant for both people and cargo. All the seats can fold down into the floor for more room, and the cabin can actually open up into the cargo box, and that box can also extend further out as well. There aren't many performance specifications, but there we're going to use the 5.7 liter V8 Hemi in this 5,000 pound truck, and that would have had 345 horsepower and 375 pound feet of torque in this model and also it would have had a 5-speed automatic transmission and front-wheel drive. I'm not sure how I feel about the Rampage. From the front, I think it looks very aggressive, but it just seems kind of strange at the back. I really do like the smart cargo options though, and these would definitely benefit many pickup drivers. At the time, Dodge probably didn't need this truck due to the Dakota being out, but now they are looking to release another mid-size pickup soon, so maybe a design like this could work for them. Sticking with the pickups, next is the Dodge Max Cab. This was a four-door sport utility pickup truck, smaller than the Rampage. This was first shown off at the 2000 Detroit Auto Show and is created based off of a modified Dakota chassis. The front has a Dodge looking grille, but it really doesn't look very aggressive. The body kind of has similar styling to the Ram 1500 if you compare the two visually on the side, but the Max Cab design just seems kind of off-putting. The cargo bed is small, and the reverse lights are built into the rear bumper. Moving on inside, the interior has a cluster with a shifter, infotainment screen, and many, many buttons. There was also one built-in screen for the passengers to share in the back seats, and those back seats also had built-in child seats. And overall, the Max Cab could seat five people. As for performance, the truck was fairly agile and was supposed to handle like a sedan. Under the hood was the 4.7 liter V8 Magnum, which made 235 horsepower and 295 pound-feet of torque at the time. This was paired with an electronic automatic transmission. This was another cool try from Dodge, but it actually wasn't meant for production, and was just an outlet for innovation. I think they definitely missed the mark on the visual appearance of the truck though. Many of the features found here were later used in different pickups, like that nicer interior, so it did serve a purpose. But out of all the concept car videos I've done, this one concept has to be one of my least favorites. The Dodge Kahuna was a very interesting variation of a minivan. It was seen at the 2003 Detroit Auto Show and looks like it mixes styling from the PT Cruiser, Dodge Grand Caravan, and the Dodge M80 to create a very interesting look. Not sure what Dodge meant with the Kahuna name, which could mean an important person, a very large wave, or in Hawaiian, a shaman. I think that they were trying to go for the big wave surfer theme here. Dodge says that active individuals, true free spirits, demand vehicles that are flexible with appropriate room for gear, but they want it with style. The Kahuna was named for its extreme attitude and approach. This is a car designed for those with a free spirit. The Kahuna has a retro style surf feeling to it, 
and it holds six passengers inside. All the side glass can go down into the doors, which gives it a more open air feeling, and there are no window frames or B or C pillars to get into the way of the view of the passengers. There's a super long looking wheelbase that stretches out about 120 inches, and the front features the classic Dodge crossbar grille and two huge circular headlights. The sides have wooden panels made of bird's eye maple laminate. And all of this gives it a similar feel to the old Ford Woody. The top was a see-through water resistant canvas, which folded back to act as a retractable top. The paint color that you see on the car is Pacific Blue, and that color pretty much continues within the interior. There are some wave-like designs on the dashboard and doors to continue with that surfing theme, and you also get some retro style gauges as well. There is SISO flooring with a canvas-like texture, which provides some contrast inside. And as you can see, the seats could fold into tables or just totally fold away. And this was the beginning of Chrysler's stow and go seating years later. As for performance, there's a 2.4 liter turbocharged engine, four speed automatic and front wheel drive. That engine makes 215 horsepower and the wheels are 22 inches with 255 millimeter wide tires. I definitely think that the Kahuna is a really unique design and it's something that Dodge tried out at the beginning of the 2000s when SUVs and crossovers were really starting to flood the market. As a car enthusiast, I can appreciate what Dodge tried to do, but many people did refer to this model as incredibly ugly, and that's probably why it was never released. The Dodge Venom seemed like a pretty good idea. It was the blueprint for a performance car. Dodge built this concept in 1995, and they used the Dodge Neon as a base but modified it for more power and performance. They took that Neon, stretched the wheelbase by two inches, converted it from front wheel drive to rear wheel drive, and put the cockpit in the middle of the car. And lo and behold, we have the Venom. To me, this looks a lot like the early Vipers, or even like the Copperhead concept. There was a sloping roof and bold grille openings and vents. Big tires complemented the look with 20 inch rims in the back, 19 inches up front, and 245 millimeter wide tires which were pretty big for 1995. Performance is also really respectable for this time period. Dodge stuck their 3.5 liter V6 under the hood, but this one was specially tuned to make a nice 260 horsepower. As I said, it was rear wheel drive, came with a six speed manual transmission and weighed just 2,700 pounds. Suspension was independent in all four corners with double wishbones. And all of this made the Venom go zero to 60 in 5.2 seconds, which pretty much rivals the current 5.7 liter V8 Dodge Chargers. Overall, I really love everything about the Venom. It looks futuristic and seems like a nice sports coupe and was awesome for 1995. The power and performance is decent as well, good power to weight ratio, and it looked like it would be priced fairly affordable for consumers. This is basically along the lines of what people want today, a two-door Dodge Charger with a manual transmission. It's too bad this car never made it because I feel that it would have been a huge success. Last but not least is the Dodge Avenger Stormtrooper. This was a highly customized Dodge Avenger concept, released at SEMA 2007, and in my opinion was one of the best looking Avengers you could possibly find. It was inspired by the Star Wars Stormtrooper costumes, and there were many custom visual mods done to this, such as tinted headlights and taillights, blue magic tinted glass, new front and rear fascias, a sill arrow kit, rear spoiler, and cold air intake. There are also Z9 HID projector headlamps, Predator halo lights, and a fuel filler cap board from the Challenger. Wheels are beautiful 20 by 9 inch Alcoa Forge rims with some Dodge graphics on them. And on those wheels were 245, 35, 20 Michelin Pilot Sport PS2 tires. And both the wheels and body are painted in a custom pearl white. The Stormtrooper was also pretty powerful, using the Chrysler Pacifica 4 liter V6, which was tuned to pump out 240 horsepower, 253 pound feet of torque, and was paired with all-wheel drive and a six-speed automatic transmission. There was also a custom Borla exhaust, so this thing probably sounded pretty good too. Other nice features were the auto stick steering wheel paddle shifters and a KW custom coilover suspension setup. To stop the car better, there's a big brake package from StopTech with six piston front and four piston rear brakes. Moving on inside, the awesomeness continues. The seats are Alcantara suede, lined black and white with some red stitching and stripes, and these are the bucket seats taken from the Dodge Charger SRT8. The material on the seats also covers the instrument panel, doors, headliner, pillars, and steering wheel too. On the center console you can find three gauges, and it's also colored in pearl white. The Stormtrooper also came with kicker audio for great sound, and red LED interior lighting. 
How could you make the Stormtrooper even more awesome? Add two Azentech mobile PCs with two gigs of RAM each. One is up in the front dash, and the other is in the center between the rear seats. With these PCs, the driver can control the tuning of the engine. You can order parts, calibrate the engine, access Mopar performance parts, and communicate with engineers and fellow owners in online chat rooms. Drivers could also adjust fuel maps and download TSBs from nearby dealerships with the car on. A truly awesome feature that could have had huge potential. There's no word as to how expensive this model would have been, but there's no denying how cool it is. It's basically a perfectly modded Avenger in my opinion. It's got the looks, it's got the technology, it's got the comfort, and it's got the performance. I don't mind the regular Avenger, but this Stormtrooper really blows me away and is one hell of a concept car. Well if you're still around, you've made it to the end of the video. Hope you guys enjoyed seeing these concept cars. I definitely love exploring these old concepts and making these types of videos. Let me know which one was your favorite out of the Rampage, Max Cab, Kahuna, Venom, and Stormtrooper. Stay tuned for more parts of the Dodge Concept Car series, and make sure to subscribe for more Mopar and Car content, and I'll see you next video.